Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive Genesis game dev tutorial. In the previous lesson we created this little demo of a 2D side scrolling platform game with jumping and gravity and so on and it worked very well but now we're going to input a much bigger sprite because of course 16-bit games tend to have larger sprites and that brings its own challenges. To match the background we've been using, the sprite we're going to be using here is Chakan the Forever Man. We're going to begin by first importing the file into our res folder and then we're going to change resources.res so that it loads this Chakan sprite rather than the Senti sprite we've been using. Since the size of the sprite is different too, we need to change this 44 number here. So these tiles are 16 by 16, but of course importing into SGDK we need to use 8 by 8 tiles. So it's 6 tiles or 8 by 8 tiles across and 8 tiles down. And since we don't use it anymore, we can go ahead and we can delete the old Senti sprite. Don't forget to save that, save the resource.res file and now we can go move on to main.c. So we're going to have to make some changes here, especially to the, first of all, to the player width and the player height. Remember this is in terms of pixels. Next we're going to have to decide what the collision box is going to look like. So we're going to go back to our sprite here and draw where we think the collision rectangle should fall and then we're going to use that to work out what kind of offset we need because remember the location of the sprite itself on the screen in SGDK and the uh, the location the coordinates of the collision box are going to be different so if you recall a couple of lessons back we created this offset values for the left right top and bottom of the collision box what you want to make these is entirely up to you you can see my process here so remember the um, the sprite on the screen, the regular coordinates are from the top left hand corner so that's where we offset from so we measure from the left hand side and we also measure from the top of the sprite. Also since this sprite is a lot taller I'm just going to increase the uh, jumping velocity a little to 14. Now let's save and compile and see how it looks. If we just jump up and down initially it all looks fine. The bottom one's working and also is hitting the head fine but if we move to the left now you'll see that we actually move through the platform and it's the same from the right hand side so let's have a look at what's happening here. According to the code that we already have in place when we for example move to the left hand side the only two points we are checking on the left hand side are the top left hand corner and the bottom left hand corner. So we have, when we're using a very tall sprite such as this, we have all this space in between the left and the, uh, the left, top left and bottom left hand corner that we're not checking. So what we need to do is we need to check the tiles in between the top left and the bottom left hand corner. And we, so we're going to have to make another two or three checks. And of course, after that, we're going to have to do the same on the right hand side as well. Depending on how wide your sprite is, you may also have to do another check at the top and the bottom. But I think for us, for our sprite here, we can probably get away without doing that. We're going to need to create some more variables in our collision function. And we already have these two variables here, which give us the um, tile, the coordinates in terms of tiles of the top and the bottom of our collision box. But of course, we need some values in between those two. So that's what we're going to do now. Luckily, we have an easy way of calculating this. We can simply take the calculation we really did before for the um, top of the collision box, and we can simply add one, and then that will give us the tile beneath that. And if we add two, it'll give us the two tiles beneath that. And if we add three, it'll give us three tiles beneath that. So that's a quick way of doing it. It means we don't have to make a lot of the same calculations again, so we can save a bit on CPU time too. To begin with, I'm going to select the tile 2 below the top of the collision box tile because I want to see if we can get away with just having one extra point in the middle. I suspect it won't be enough, but let's give it a try. We still have to work out the array index number that this tile falls into, as well as the tile collision type. So let's create a couple of those variables now too. Okay, with those two created, we can now go to the if player move right section of the code and we can start making the calculations for these two variables. This is the completed calculations here, so just the same formula we we're using as last time. All that's left to do now is add another or to our if statement to see whether the uh, tile is solid or not. So we can just do a bit of copying and pasting and then change the name. 
and then once we've done that we can save and compile and see how the ROM looks. Okay, so that's not working. So the problem is that when I did a plus two, I think that's falling at that point's falling around his sword, around his waist area. So if I change it to plus one, then that tile will be a bit higher up. It'll just be uh, one tile below where the top of his hat is, and that should just be enough to collide with the top. Okay, so there it is. So if I try and move right, I can't because that point is also colliding with it now. So you can't move through it. However, due to the lack of collision points on the lower half of the sprite, you can see that that means that when we try and jump up here, we can still kind of clip through the ground almost. It is not quite right. So we're going to have to create another two tiles below that where we check the collision and then it should work fine. Just skipping ahead a bit, you can see that I've created an extra two uh, variables here. So plus two and plus three tiles and given them different names and then we, of course just as usual we make the calculations within the if move right and then we also add the um, more or to the if statements to see whether the tiles are solid or not. If we now take another look at our ROM you can see that our little problem before has been fixed. There don't seem to be any gaps on the right hand side of the player sprite so there's no clipping through the platform anymore everything seems to be working fine so now we just have to repeat the process for the left before we do so though i want to first introduce a little bug that we have in our jumping uh, mechanics so you can see that if we drop off a platform and then press the jump button the player is still going to jump and so it's almost like a mid-air jump and that's something that we don't particularly want and that's because of course according to our jumping code uh, the player can jump so long as jumping is forced now if you're on a platform and then you walk off the platform you start falling down because you haven't uh, actually jumped before the jumping isn't set to true so you can technically uh, you're technically allowed to take another jump now in most platform games that's not allowed but thankfully we can do a quick fix of this We simply need to go into our button control functions and add another condition to our if statement. So if the player, if the if the player y velocity, if it's less than or equal to zero, then we can jump. So basically, if the player is not falling, because falling would be a positive number, then we were allowed to jump. So that should stop the little problem that we've been having. If I now try to jump after falling off a ledge, then thankfully the character doesn't do a mid-air jump anymore. Okay, so with that out of the way, now let's turn our attention to the left-hand side of the character. And just as we did with the right-hand side, we're going to add some more collision points on the left so that we don't get these uh, collision bugs while walking to the left anymore. While we could probably just reuse some of the um, variables already created for the left-hand collision as well, I'm going to create some more. So I'll skip ahead so you can see I've created the ones for the left-hand side now, the same as we created for the right-hand side. And then we're going to have to, within the player move left section, we're going to have to redo the calculation so you can work out the index of those uh, collision tiles and with that, and the type of collision tile, whether it's a zero or one. And then, of course, we're going to alter the if statement and add some more or conditions. And since that if statement's getting very long now, just to show you that you can edit it so that it looks like this, so it's um, line by line. So long as the um, the curly brackets and everything are in place, then you can write this way and see. Just looks a bit easier to read. If you now play about with your ROM a bit, you'll notice that the collision for the left-hand side is also working fine. So we can jump left and right. We can try and uh, hit against lots of different collisions and it seems to be working okay because our sprite is so big and so tall and so wide trying to make this jump is, is difficult but I don't think that's anything to do with the collision code it's just the um, the way I've designed the level is probably not suitable for a character that size and it's always good to squeeze into small spaces like this just to make sure it's all working okay uh, so you don't get snagged on anything and it looks like fine we're not getting stuck to the wall or anything so I think here while there's always could be bugs I think it's looking pretty robust the code we have so that should be fine some people have asked whether or not we can use an 8x8 tile collision grid instead of 16x16 16 16. and of course we can do that you just have to make the obvious changes to the code however using 8x8 tiles instead of 16x16 16 16 does have its significant drawbacks which is why it's generally recommended that you use 16x16 16 16 tiles 
First of all, it means that we have to do many more calculations. As you can see here, when we're using 8x8 tiles, we have many more tiles that we have to check against the scenery. And that obviously, the more calculations we have to do, the more strain it is on the CPU. If you're just using one single player, it might be okay, but especially if you have a second player, maybe even some of the enemies on the screen also need some kind of collision calculation, then the strain on the CPU would add up and it could possibly cause problems in the future. In addition to that, using 8x8 tiles means that the um, length of the array in terms of tiles is double as is the height. Now that means that in terms of data, the array will be four times the size which is obviously a bit of a waste of ROM space because we always want to save on ROM space wherever we can and it's especially important for very big levels. In addition to that, you also have the problem of the character potentially going through any 8x8 tiles because we spoke in the last lesson about terminal velocity and that would have to be set to a maximum of 8 or below if you didn't want the character to accidentally move through any tiles. I hope that everything in this lesson was clear. We've now got quite a robust a 2D side scrolling collision system in place but of course we still have a lot more left to cover and as usual I will add the source code for this lesson on my Patreon. Okay so I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content then please subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you want to support the channel further I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time. Farewell.